Greetings and welcome back to Switched to Linux. You know, one of the things with this headset is I can actually talk a little bit quieter, probably bother the neighbor a little bit less, and you guys hear it just as fine. Uh, you know, still working on this thing. So, hello, ignore my chan. Thanks for the reminder. I was waiting just for you. So, now that you are here, we can start. Greetings, Chip. How are you, sir? Chip, we still got to get together for some coffee, man. Um, I, I'm sporting the Manjaro again. Got the Manjaro back behind me. Eventually, I'm, I'm, I want to install uh, uh, Solus Gnome on this, but I've just been loving Manjaro Budgie so much. I just don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, hello, PB32, is that a 32 ounce jar of peanut butter I hear? Hmm? And hello Mark, greetings, the kitty says hello to everybody, actually he says meow, right? Want to say meow? Yeah. Want to come up here and say hi to people again? Come here, come here you, there you go, he's like, hello peoples, you get more of me today because I wasn't on the stream yesterday. Yeah, he didn't visit me yesterday when I was recording that uh, um, uh, Firefox video. Hello, LJ. In Chicago. All right, sweet. Chicago's pretty fun. Enjoy that city. Uh, <laughs> ignore my chant. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? <laughs> okay. Oh, KO2610. Got a quick look at the new Linux Mint Mate earlier. I gotta say, I like what they're doing. I'll tell you, there's there's some interesting stuff. This is like 18.1 to 18.2. Meh. But man, this new version that we're gonna look at is absolutely awesome. Um, just And I haven't really played with it yet. I've just been, uh, just installed it, had a quick look at the, the guides and stuff. So I'm anxious to actually jump in here. <laughs> I'd say a really bad joke, but I don't want to get totally demonetized. <laughs> oh, hello, Albert Crow. Uh, no, the mic had a problem, and you know what? I have to say, let me check the email before I make any statements here on it, but... Um, I gotta say, um, I, I liked the Meteor mic as I, as I had it. Um, Hello, Mozilla, are you working? Uh, I like the Meteor mic when I had it. Um, however, um, they are apparently non-responsive. I sent them a message several days ago saying, hey, this microphone broke in less than a year. Um, any ideas on replacements? And they have, I have not heard a peep from them at all. And so I'm probably just going to completely non-recommend that mic anymore. Um, I still do want to replace... Uh, replace this with another USB mic. A lot of it is because I just got the equipment to use a USB mic to record my outdoor videos and then of course the very day I was going to be testing that it broke. So um, I will get a new USB mic although I might continue to use this for most of my videos because most people really like it and, and I've been editing videos with it the, for a while now and uh, sound is way better on this than it was with the with the Meteor mic. Um, of course that kind of makes sense because this is a more of a professional mic layout. Um, I could replace this part and still keep all of the rest of the connection but the other downside is this is a wireless one so it uses battery etc etc. Hello, Ham Ham. All right, Lance, greetings. Uh, I'm going to be looking at Cinnamon today, Linux user. Um, mic pops a bit on the P. It does, and that is a downside. Actually, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. It does. It uh, it doesn't really have good pop filter issue, and I have to be very careful uh, about that, and that's the, the challenge. The other one was a whole lot better. This one's not quite as, as good. Meteor's good. I prefer the road podcaster to broadcast. It is also good to do voiceover work. Yeah. Hello, Dennis. Quad is great, but the pops are not that good. I agree. I agree. Um, and this really, the entire setup, I think I paid like $100 for the whole setup, which had a mic, a wireless transmitter, a wireless receiver, and then I put another like I don't know, 30, 40 bucks into this, into the, I just have a, a simple USB interface. It mixes, you know, two or three channels together. So, um, it's good. It's just, um, it's just the fact that, uh, how it is. Let me try readjusting the mic positioning, see if that works. Really what I could possibly do is, um, build a, a micro pop filter for this. That might do it. I don't know. I'll have to test it around a little bit. 
A little louder would be good. A little louder. Let me up the volume. How's that? How's that? Um, plug your ears. I'm going to do a quick uh, check. I'm going to check for redlining. Test, 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 test. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see redlining. There you go. That's exciting. All right. Liked the earlier volume better. All right. I'll go back up a little bit. Uh, I, it was uh, the earlier volume, though, was, was redlining, and uh, that's always a bad thing. So I'll kind of do half in between what I had it and what I had. There we go. We'll see how that works. Um, I'm still not redlining, and Mike's a little further away, so that's actually pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, run with this. Let's see how this uh, how this works. Um, no offense, I gotta say, Linux has been the most frustrating and hardest OS I've ever seen in my life. Really, Ben? I I mean, it depends which distros are you running on and what issues are you are you uh, having, Ben? Uh, shoot some things in there in the comments, and I'll jump back and forth between the comments and things. Uh, throughout here. All right, so we're going to look at Linux Mint 18.3 uh, beta. First, let's have a quick look at their website and see what has changed. Um, so, and, and I got to say, like I said, uh, I've been using uh, Linux Mint since 17.3 and, uh, you know, 17.3 to 18.1, hmm, okay, that was cool. 18.1 uh, to 18.2, meh, really nothing changed. Um, 18.2 to 18.3, it looks like there's a lot of big changes in here, so we're going to be looking at these and seeing what this actually looks like. This works with the mic farther away. Good. Very good. All right. So, uh, first is they have a new software manager. So they're going with more like a, a, a GNOME software manager feel, but I'm hoping the functionality is still the same. That's one of the things I really liked about the Linux Mint software manager is it's very searchable. Uh, unlike GNOME's is not searchable in the slightest. Um, now what they're saying is that it is, uh, and the style, I mean, I, I like the style of it. They say they are going to improve the style. They say they greatly improved the speed. The only thing I'm seriously concerned is to make sure that the um, the um, uh, the searchability is still there because that's one of the things that the reason I want that is a person who's new to Linux may not know what software is out there. You don't know if you're looking for a web editor, you don't know what Bluefish is. You will search for web editor on the GNOME software manager. Last time I knew, you had to search for something by title to have it show up. Linux Mint allowed it by title or by description, and that was an important. And I really hope they didn't change that, but we're going to test that. Um, but they do actually have a lot of new apps in there, Spotify, WhatsApp, Skype, things that us Linuxy guys, we probably may or may not actually want, but hey, it's good for those people that want them or need them. I know I personally still use Skype with business stuff. I just, I can't use it on my, uh, uh, on my devices anymore. Linux, it still works. Apple, it still works. Um, I stopped letting it talk to Windows a long time ago. Um, so it is uh, more inspired by the GNOME Software Center, so hopefully that's good. We're going to have a look at that. They added Flatpak support. This is the one that was a little bit controversial because they could have gone with Flatpak or they could have gone with Snap. I would really have liked to see them go with Snap. Snap turns Solace into a meh distro, into a this is one to watch in 2018. Uh, it, it was snap packages. The flat pack is like snap packages. It's there's they're just packaged a little bit differently. And what I'm seeing is that I, I really and, and, and in all honesty, I'm talking about things that I've seen reviewed. Um, I agree with other people in the fact that I have used snap. I have not used flat pack. Looks like there's some similar functionality. However, um, however, it uh, um, uh, it looks as though there are a lot of software applications you can install with it. So we'll have a look at that. Um, I mean, I'm liking this whole Mega Man 3 old classic Nintendo games. I would not dare load any of these in a live stream to look at them because Nintendo is on my hit list of sleazy companies. Um, that, you, know, hey, you showed a picture. In fact, I got to scroll past this. You showed a picture of our game. We're going to copyright you. Screw you, Nintendo. Screw you. You've lost all respect I have for you. All right, backup tools. This is the one that I think uh, everyone's been looking for. Um, the one key question I'm going to have and I'm going to test is, can this run a backup to my NAS? The Ubuntu Backup Manager can. The current Linux Mint Backup one cannot. Um, this is going to be what I want to see. And so it looks very promising, but we're going to have a look at that. System snapshots. Oh, 
Like, there is so much awesome in this. There's so much awesome in this. System snapshots are awesome in that I can take a snapshot of my whole system, save it out. Like, if you remember back when this, when these crappy SSD that I had died in, you know, less than seven months use, I was actually able to make a system image of this disk off of a USB drive. Despite it wouldn't boot, I could make a system image of the rest of it. I deployed the system image across this current hard drive I have, and uh, that actually enabled me to rebuild my system with, really, I didn't do anything different. Um, but this here is kind of a native snapshot build, so that actually looks like something that is just like, that's cool. I'm anxious to try that. Um, system reports. This would be great. One of the challenges I have is my Linux Mint work computer, which is on my Dell Inspiron. Um, that is a, it's a general purpose computer, but it's primarily that is built. And the way I have that built is when this computer that sits down here finally dies, and it's about eight years old now, so I'm probably not expecting it to live a whole lot longer. When that finally dies, the plan is I don't even have to move that. I just take that computer, drop it on top, Reswap the cables, uh, you know, put plug the HDMI in, plug the keyboard mouse signal back in, and that thing's completely ready to go for full scale web design. It is completely built that way. And one of the challenges, though, is that about once a month, it decides it wants to shut itself down and restart. I have no idea why. The other problem I have on that computer is that. I started it on Linux Mint 17.3 and it was really snappy, but it's it's been upgraded from 17.3 to 18.0 to 18.1 to 18.2, and now it takes about three to four minutes to turn on. So I was thinking about just taking all the files out, wiping the whole thing, rebuilding it, and reinstalling my home directory. Um, I've been thinking about doing that because I, I and I've seen a lot of other people say that when you take the 17.3 up to the 18, it it um, deeply impacts the the startup performance. So I'm wondering if that might be what I need to do, but I can't figure out how to get the thing moving any faster. It just it takes three to five minutes to start when I turn the thing on. It used to start in you know less than a minute. So uh, crash reports though will be very helpful. Um, as long as of course they don't send them back up to Linux Mint unless I want them to. Uh, let's see, system reports and we have Cinnamon 3.6 Okay, so it looks like with Cinnamon 3.6, it looks like we are going to support online accounts. I'm not a big onto that, but this really does bring the Cinnamon into a lot of the modern functions and features. Um, again, not a feature I would use, but it's an awesome feature to have for people who do want to use that type of stuff. Um, especially since I want to start experimenting with things like uh, OwnCloud and NextCloud. Uh, there's really nothing else on here I'd actually um, put on there, but we'll have a look. Uh, let's see, I've never bothered using spices before. Nemo extensions. Probably wouldn't work with that. I love Nemo as it is. Uh, let's see. There's window progress. Applications communicate their progress to the Windows Manager. Ooh, okay, I see what that means. Okay, that's good. X app improvements, and then you know just some basic improvements in in the login screens and other things like that. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to check in on the comments one more time, and then we'll uh, jump on over to uh, we'll jump on over to the um, uh, uh, to the distro itself. So let's see who else is in. Do -do 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 -do. POS OS is supposed to be easy. Well, Ben, it depends on what you're running. The problem is there's so many Linux things. If you end up jumping onto some Arch, yeah, you're going to have a hard time. Uh, so let us know the distro you're using and what problems you're having. And this is a whole board of people who are very helpful. We'll, we'll get you on the right path. Okay. Hello, Brian, the computer geek. I am doing just fine myself. We need Linux Mint with a budgie. Ooh, mm, Linux Mint budgie. Ah, especially since they took away our KDE, right? <laughs> I love my KDE. All right, uh, Windows 8 nearly gave me a mental breakdown. Yep, yep, yep. 
I didn't mind Windows 8 nearly as much as Windows 10. Like, the UI was a giant nightmare, but I can deal with a UI change. I, once you start collecting all my data and I can't turn it off, you're done. That's the problem. 18.3 have Snap. No, it has uh, flat packs, not Snap. And then that's so a lot of people are saying they should have gone with Snap because it's a whole lot more developed than Flatpak is. Gnome Software Center indexing searching is terrible. Yep. Okay. To install Snap D to use Snaps with Mint. Yeah, okay, you could just do that. Uh, lock that setting in the mic now, Tom, right where you have it now. Sound is awesome. No crack or nothing. Yeah, the downside is, like, all I did is I bent it back a little bit. <laughs> so hopefully it stays. <laughs> hey, Anna Rita, how are you? Anna Rita, you'll be very pleased to know that my cable management is a whole lot better now. Um, I replaced, I did finally replace the old modem, got a new uh, got a new gigabit modem in right now so I can actually take its higher advantages. However, I'm still not getting maximum speed because wouldn't you know that both my router and my network switch down here are both uh, only 10100. So I have a um, I have a gigabit switch coming in the mail uh, to replace my, my little four point switch. I'm replacing that with an eight point switch and then uh, as soon as I'm done getting all the configurations done, then uh, PFSense router with the gigabit Gigabit ports is going to take over the uh, Linksys router that I have with uh, non-gigabit. And then that way, my whole network should be maxed out in speed to current. You know, I'll bring it up to 2017. <laughs> uh, I went with Flatpak, but Snap is still compatible. All right, I'm using Mint. I'm only trying to use it for wine games and simple tasks like school. I'm not, and I'm brand new to Linux, and I haven't a clue how to work it solo. Okay. And I do use YouTube and an iPhone, by the way. Okay. All right. So on Linux Mint with Wine, right there, Wine is a little bit harder to configure. Um, instead of going with Wine, um, and, and first understand that, that a lot of people have been spreading this terrible rumor that uh, Wine just makes Windows programs all work. It, it does, it's not, doesn't work that way. Um, some programs are supported. Some of them are not. Some of the modern ones I find are not. Um, so the best thing to do is install Play on Linux and then search for your games that you want to install because generally if it's a popular game, somebody's already figured out the best configurations and then you let Play on Linux figure out the, uh, the best configurations for everything. That should help out with that. Um, and everything else, what are, the, uh, what are the specific challenges you're having? Because Mint should be pretty easy for you. Um, particularly if you're coming from a Windows type environment. So, um, but if you shoot me some more details, I'd be glad to work with you one on one and uh, help get you some some stuff. All right, like the fact that went with flat pack snappy is nothing more than another one of Canonical's trademarked attempts to solve problems that has already been solved. Oh, okay, all right, that's a, a cool perspective to take. When now, like I said, I haven't researched this. No need for screenshot anymore. Mint is bringing snapshot to the mix. Very cool. Linksmin is adding applications by default that I use the very moment. Yep, time shift is very nice. Also something like System Restore and Windows. Isn't also like the uh, Time Machine and Apple, I believe. Feel uncomfortable with most universal package managers. They just seem too good to be true. I think they might just be a little bulky at times. Uh, hey, Xiphoid Process. 18.3 beta or not used at the moment. It is still beta. 18.3 is still beta. I like Linux very much, but for gaming is real pain. I've had little joy with Wine, so they can fix that or come up with another viable alternative. Some people are saying there's another alternative. If you know what that is, throw that in the comments. I don't play games, so I really can't comment much more. Hey, Frank, how are you? Try and do these live streams after 6.3 um, Pacific. Um... Let's see, six Pacific. Well, I do I do the Wednesday one early, Frank, because I have a big audience over in UK and other places, and I try and do one a light, slightly earlier so it's not like 4 a.m. for them. Uh, so the, my Wednesday stream is early. I also have a Friday and a Saturday stream at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is six your time. I don't know, maybe I can push something back to 10. That would be, that'd work. <laughs> Who needs Linux Mint Budgie? Let's use XFCE. There you go. I was very impressed with XFCE last time I looked at it. I can't remember was that. I think that was Ubuntu XFCE actually, but I was very impressed with where it's going. Andragos Cinnamon for the win. Nice. One of the arch lovers, been on Manjaro. 
since March. Yeah, then I hear you're doing well with it. I, I tell you, I, I like this. I really do like that Manjaro back there. That's pretty sweet. Has wine improved in the past three years? Last time it had some issues. I Supposedly the latest version that's going to come out is going to even support... Is it DirectX 10? Is that correct? Am I saying that right? Um, but it should start really supporting more things. I don't know. Continue wed for deepen at the moment. Okay. What's up with the hairdo today? Uh, took a shower and didn't actually wash my hair, so it might still be greasy. I don't know. <laughs> that and too much. Oh, why is stuff not working? I had one of those days just a little bit before everything. I don't know. <sighs> you are helping my OCD with the cable management, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Get a video where you fix your shirt, and you said, those OCD folks, I will fix it. It's just like, <laughs> that's right, that's right, you know, it's just, see, now I just got to do something funny and exciting like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, we wouldn't be that mean. We wouldn't be that mean. Get things nice and angled, right? <laughs> okay. Now, of course, it's not completely straight on my end, but it looks straighter on yours. Uh... Do you have a computer with Solace? I do not yet. I am planning on putting Solace over here. I'm just, I don't want to get rid of Manjaro. I might actually wipe my Debian now for it. Um, the the Manjaro works better than Debian as far as work working stuff. So and I can always reinstall Debian if I need to. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, boot this guy up. We're gonna boot up our uh, our desktop, and then we'll have a look at it. Actually, one thing I'm gonna do. Oh. I just need to move this out of the way. Give me a second. My uh, comment thing went a little goofy on me. I have no idea what I just did to my comment thread, but it went crazy. There's that, there's that, there's that, and go back full screen on that. Okay, so of course you can't see my notification up there right under my picture, but it tells me we're running in software rendering mode, so do keep that in mind throughout this, is that we are rendering in software rendering mode, and so um, some things may not work as well as they could be. Uh, Matt, greetings. Matt is excited for this. That is totally awesome. Okay, so here when we get the startup, uh, we have documentation, we have new features, we have apps, we have drivers. Um, so, of course, uh, if you're looking for programs or looking for drivers, first let's just go ahead and uh, have a look at the system itself. We want to see what's installed by default. I'm not really expecting anything different than I'm not used to here. Okay. All right. So, of course, I don't care for the icons on Linux Mint, so let's go ahead and look at the themes and see if we have any new themes to, to play with. I'm just going to look at some of the basic stuff first. So there's looks like there's nothing specifically new in here. Uh, there's your icons. In fact, it looks like they have nothing new in here. Let's go with these, these icons. I like those ones a little bit better. Eh, that's too dark. Let's go, how's that one? There's that, and there's your basic mouse pointers, and then, yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and stick with that as far as that's concerned. All right, looking at our settings. Uh, so here's your online accounts. So that's one of the new settings. So now if you happen to have any accounts over here, you can plug these in. So there's media server. I think this would allow me to add a, an SMTP or IMAP account, so I could go ahead and do that. I'll have to look into those a little bit more, see how exactly that works. Um, 
I don't, pretty much don't use any of these. Um, obviously, I have a Google account for YouTube, but that's about it. Um, but anyway, for those people wanting to use the online account integration, that is one of those new features. Uh, okay. Nothing has really changed in there. So... Let's have a look at the firewall. I'm trying to remember what password I gave this thing. Okay, so uh, like it used to be, the firewall is there, but it's not enabled by default. Usually that's a good thing, actually, because there's nothing worse than like, why isn't something's not working? The internet's not working. It's because of the firewall. <laughs> so that's not too, uh, that's not too uh, uh, concerning for me. Here's your driver management. I thought backup would have been down here, so we'll have to go back up. So there's VirtualBox guest editions, the microcode, okay. So there's your drivers, there's your software sources, okay. Yeah, I would figure backup would be in here. Am I just missing it? Or it's probably, maybe it's just, uh, um, somewhere else let's go ahead and look at that all right so here's let's see here's ppas here's your official repositories additional repos uh, let's come down here so nothing has changed in here you can decide whether you want to just keep the computer safe review or always update everything so you can choose which one you want to do there so there are some updates already. We're not going to bother updating that. All right, so nothing else has really changed in there. Let's have a quick look at the system info. So Cinnamon version 3.62. Okay. Well, I didn't, don't think I launched anything to do that. that but uh, anyway, well, Firefox loaded. Let's see what version of Firefox they gave us, right? Yep, same one. Same one as uh, 18.2 has 56. I'm curious if they're going to put Quantum in there or not. That'd be neat if they did that. Uh, also, let's go ahead and check the desktops. I'm just doing the the non-changey things first. Uh, the things that don't seem to have changed. Uh, which ones? It's this one. I think this is the new one. So these would be the new folders here. So again, we just get some just some very nice images in there. Very beautiful designs. I think we're going to run with this one for, for now. All right, let's see. Okay, so there's the backup tool. So this is uh, this is that new function with the backup tool. So let's see what we can do. So we have personal data. We can restore data. We can back it up now. We can select our software. So let's go ahead and have a look at the software. Select the applications you want to save. Uh, it doesn't look like it's populating any list or anything. So. Um, Listed applications below you installed with a software manager. Okay, so maybe uh, maybe my thought is that I'd have to install something. Let's go ahead and install something, and then we'll come back to the backup tool. Uh, so that's the next thing I want to do is let's see if this really loads way faster than it used to. So one of the things you'll notice uh, that they mentioned in their documentation is that you no longer have to enter the password to get into the software center. You will have to enter the password to install something, though. So I gotta say this looks cool. This really does look nice. I'm I'm impressed with the design of it all. Um, let's see. So I want to search for word processor. 
Okay, so it does look like this is retaining that old functionality. That's that one thing I wanted to retain. So, wow, I'm deeply impressed with the software manager. This is awesome. Um, it still has the search functionality. That's what I wanted. That's what the GNOME Software Center does not have. But um, it's just it just looks classier. So they inspired by GNOME, but they just made it way better. They just kind of kind of moved it ahead there. Um, so you can install a variety of different things here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and install Inkscape. That's one that I use frequently. All right. So it is checking for dependencies. It's telling me the extra stuff we need to install. Now I have to enter my password. So that should install. Now what it says though is it should be maintaining, like it should be remembering the password for a period of time. So I shouldn't have to re-enter it. Okay, so that's good. That was another thing that kind of bothered me on the GNOME Software Center is you got to enter the password every single time. Um, so I got to say this really looks cool. So let's go ahead and have a let's look through the browse functionality so we can search and we can browse. You're looking for something cool, you can do that. So here's your fonts. Let's see if we have Windows fonts. Didn't see it. Let's go ahead and look through that again. <sighs> All right, so there's Windows, here's Games. So you can separate it out board games, first person games, RTS. Turn based. Hedge Wars is fun. This is like if you like the old video game Worms. That's kind of like Worms. It's pretty fun. All right, so here's Office Applications. And I'm curious, let's see what happens if I do Accounting. So we have GNU Cash shows up, personal accounting software for small household. Does anyone know if there is another tool like a replacement for QuickBooks that I could use for Linux? That's one of those Windows applications I still use. I have GNU Cache that I use for some of my stuff, but it's just not quite as good. All right, let's look at sound and video. So there you go. I want to install Audacity. Okay, so it still does remember my password. So there's Radio Tray. Um, Let's do video. Let's see what um, version of Caden Live we have. Do we even have Caden Live? There we go, Caden Live. It is still the old version of Caden Live. Okay, this is something Linux Mint's got to figure out. It's, this is still based on the logo, of course. Um, it is still looks like it is the old version of Caden Live, which is actually doesn't work well. Uh, in fact, I really find it doesn't work at all. <laughs> uh, so I always install the PPAs for that. Let's see if OBS is in here. Now it looks like I still have to install OBS from that. They did so say though they have Skype in here. Let's see what Skype looks like. Oh, it's the one that's vomited out of the rainbow unicorns from hell. Okay, well anyway, let's go ahead and install Skype. Okay. Looks like Skype's still not installed yet. Let's have a look at that again. Okay, it says it's installed. It's not able to find it over here. Okay, there it is. So let's see what Skype version we got. Hey, it's the new unicorn one. The unicorn Skype from all Hades. All right, we'll close that out and quit Skype from down there in the bottom as well. All right, so now let's go back into our backup tool. And now we should see a list of the software selection that we had installed. So my guess is, yep, so all of the software that we had just installed, we can do that. So the idea then is, uh, you know, is is 
you reinstall the software and then you deploy your backup on top of that. That's looks like that's how it, how this is going to work. And let's go ahead and have a look at your backup. Please select where you want to save the backup file. So it looks as though I still cannot save it to a network folder. So the workaround, of course, is I could load the network folder up with fstab mounted on the, uh, on the system start, and I can save it there. That would save it in the network folder. But it lo looks as though I can't save it in there unless networking is just not working. Let's just go ahead and have a quick look at that. So yeah, network's there. So there you go. Everything everything there works so networking is fine so it looks like they're still dropping the ball on not being able to save something to uh, to a uh, to a folder so another back another thing you could do is just save it to a backups folder and then you could rsync that in with a script or something so you could do that as well um, but I really really wish that uh, it, I love the progress they made this is definitely way better of a backup tool than they used to have but it looks as though I still cannot install to a network drive and that in and of itself is is challenging because what good's a backup if you're not sending your backup to your um, uh, to your you know to off-site off your computer this is not going to save a, a critical hard drive failure all right so anyway let's just go ahead and choose backups for our location we'll move forward and then let's see add files or directories in the list below to exclude them so we're going to exclude let's go ahead and have a look at that uh, structure there so that looks like that's saving into a folder called backups in my documents okay and let's see So this is hidden folders. Okay, so we're going to include directories. I have to play with this a little bit more to get it all figured out. Um, but uh, pretty much I'd want it to essentially save the whole home folder. That's how I'd traditionally go and not even bother saving it to the backup. But uh, I have to play with this a little bit more. Uh, let's go back and do one more step. Where you want to save it, there. Please add files or directories to the list you want to exclude. Okay, uh, hidden files and folders located at the root of your home directory are not included by default if you want to include some of them in the backup. Okay, so that is a little bit challenging because that means it's not going to save your settings for applications. So if I, am for example, have in my OBS file here and I want to save that, it looks like how this is going to work. It's not going to save that by default if I understand this correctly. Um, let's see, hidden file and hidden folders located at the root of your home directory are not included by default if you want to include some of them. So what you'd have to do is hit your include directories and then you'd have to go in here and save these various directories like this. Okay, and that's really what I would do is I'd save all of these inside of these. And the reason is um, you would really need to save your, your configuration files, which are generally, if you're new to Linux and you don't know this, if I come over here to my home folder, I hold control and hit H, this is going to show my hidden files. Anything that any application saves as far as saving systems and whatever is stored inside of these files. So here's Firefox and this is my profiles folder. So if I'm going into Firefox and I save a bookmark, this is where it gets saved to. It looks like by default this is not saving those files. And that's actually a downside to this because you can think you're saving everything. You'll save your files, but you won't save any of your profiles. That's critically important for things like OBS here. I have like 20 different slide setups on this OBS profile. And if I lose that, that's about a half an hour to rebuild everything. Um, and I know I just had to do it on the Christian channel and it, things weren't saving over there. I'm like, what's going on? Well, what I did is I ported this OBS over to there to make changes, and when I did that, I didn't fail to change the permissions from the Switch to Linux user to uh, the our Walk in Christ user, and so I wasn't able to save anything because I didn't have the right permissions, because what was the in these subfolders was not a, a saved and accessible file, so you need to make sure that you are saving those. 
And let's go ahead and have a quick look at comments real quick. Um, so I see there's a lot of them. Uh, and let me know in the comments the things that uh, you'd like me to see. All right. Uh, no, do not mess with my OCD. <laughs> Steam OS is an answer for Linux gaming. Steam OS is a Linux flavor based in Debian. Um, yeah, the problem is, though, to my understanding, it's a, it's a little bit more complicated to set up, and some people are saying, eh, I don't know. But I don't know. If you've used it, Stephen, and you're saying it looks pretty cool, that's good. Things I'm interested in. Did Mint fix some of the theme issues on Cinnamon? Uh, which theme issues are you specifically looking for, Chip? Um... Because I haven't noticed any real theme issues, but there very well could be some that I didn't know about. Does it ship with 57? Uh, this is the beta. Um, as of right now, in the beta, it does not come in. I'm assuming you're talking about Firefox 57. Um, in the beta, it is not in here. This is still 56. I'm not sure what they're going to do in the final. I kind of hope so. Um, uh, that would be kind of cool to see. Using Endless Weed 10 Giga uh, is very compliant. Try to install a flat pack for me. It did not work. Let's go ahead and have a look at the. Let's first. I'm going to check the software system and see. You should be able to install flat packs from inside of this. So let's go ahead and go back over here. Let's have a look at flat packs. So these are the flat packs we have. Huh, look at that, Nestopia. I wouldn't dare install something like that. The mere, the mere mention of, of the, the N-word will cause demonetization and, and copyright strikes. I know it. <laughs> and that's Nintendo is the word, by the way. Oh, boy. All right. Um, so, and this is kind of like from all, let's see, I think Flathub has more, more stuff. Pulse effects. Audio was this audio effects? Wait, what was that pulse effects? Where's that? Audio effects for pulse audio applications. That sounds exciting. Google Play Music Desktop Player. No. I don't want more Google. Um Hey, you know what? Let's go with Steam. Let's try and install Steam. See if that works. Uh, install. Okay, this is a slight concern of mine that it still remembers the password that I had previously entered for this. Um, one of these things that they did mention, um, it you will see the Windows status down in the bottom now, which is one of those kind of new features. You know, Windows did that starting in Windows, either Vista or 7. I like that functionality, and that's actually kind of cool. I like it because I'll be able to see in file transfers what the percentage is if I have to minimize that file. All right, so in theory, that's still working. Or it's just kind of stuck, I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to go back over to comments. And... If I can get back to comments... There's my comments. That worked. All right. Um, let's see. It's still still not installing. Is that the thing you got uh, where the app's not installing? It's just kind of still stuck there. I'll, I'll give it a minute, though. Mint still isn't shipping with Mint Y. I guess I'm waiting until 19. What do you mean, Mint Y? Like the theme? It's there. It's just not on them by default. No, my wife says OCD drives drives her, but she's glad to have it. She knows where things are. Yeah, there you go. That's a that's a good reason. Considering running Solus, but not too sure. I'm mostly doing schoolwork, programming, VMs, and screen recordings for my channel. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know if uh, if all those things work well on Solus. Um, I the one I don't know for sure is check if VirtualBox does. Um, but I don't know. I think it, you should have a pretty good experience. On the same experience, new software center is pretty buggy. It's worthy of a beta label. It is still beta, I guess. 
Have they updated Linux Mint uh, Debian version yet? I have no idea if they have. Actually, I don't even know if they're doing that anymore. Are they still doing that or not? I don't know. I think Tom switched to Manjaro. Think so. No more Debian. They don't plan on moving to Stretch until 18. Oh, okay. James, how are you? And Tom, are you looking for? What am I looking for? Time shift, the new backup program. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the. Uh, I found it. <laughs> Wouldn't consider using Solus till they have uh, QOL changes. Okay. Firefox no longer an option. Only Quantum is. Only if you update standard Firefox, it goes directly to Quantum. Okay. Like Linux Mint X apps, though these are forks, but I like the way Linux Mint team does them. Quantum is Firefox. Uh, Quantum is on Firefox 57. I'm on Arch. I'm using Firefox Beta 58. Yes, uh, the trunk version is either 58 or 59. Mint did an awesome job with the software manager. I agree. Yeah, it's kind of stuck on installing Steam. Let me try and install something else. Let me go with Viber. Let's try and install Viber. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like for me, flat pack's not working right now. Come eventually just needs to get into the Ubuntu repos first and doesn't exactly help that Debian only supports Firefox CSR. Yeah. Viber's not working. But GNOME Twitch. <laughs> Alright, I really, uh, I need to minimize that because I can't see any of my status. I have no idea if I'm even streaming anymore because my status is not showing up. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm seeing anymore because my status features in OBS are not showing up. There we are. That's looking better. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of stuck, actually. Right now the software manager is, is wigging out on me. Um, let me close it and come back into it and see what's going on. So is that what you're, uh, whoever asked about that, is that what the thing that you have encountered, is that the software manager is, is glitchy? It was seemed to be running fine until I did flat packs. When I did flat packs, that's when it kind of got a little goofy. Me is DRM and Firefox lock for playing copyright content like on Netflix. I made it. Hello, Bitlo Bitblocks. How are you? Yummy recently established web for that. Yep. All right, let's go with GNOME Maps. Let's try and install that. I'm just trying to install a flat pack here and see if it works. Basically, add all hidden files. Yes, uh, Anna Rita. If you are using the backup system, I have no idea why, but it's not saving any of the profile configurations. And so you'll have all your applications back, but it'll be like you just installed them, not bringing them back to the state that you had them, that you last seen them in. And so that is uh, a downside for me is, uh, is that. So, yeah, if you just go ahead, though, and add everything in your home directory, then it will, uh, that looks like it'll be a good backup. Video quality on my end, not yours. Video dropped to 10, 144p for a second. Whoa. <laughs> Actually, I deleted my Windows side of my dual boot using Ubuntu disk tool. I was trying to format a USB. Oh, well. <laughs> yep, yep. Dark theme is what I was talking about. You already showed it. No, it still looks ugly. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I don't use the dark theme. It's it's god-awful. Um, never really cared to, though, on these. I like the I like the light theme with the black borders. Uh, <laughs> have the right to protect their product, and lately they go overboard. That's the thing. They do have the right to protect their product, but they're going so overboard, they forgot that it's 2017, and most of their publicity is going to be coming from guys playing their games on YouTube. Okay, and if you're hostile to that community, you're going to die. That's just the way the gaming world is right now. You know, I'm not a gamer, but I'm knowledgeable about how this whole content creation business runs. 
Um, I personally love Ubuntu Budgie. I'll probably be switching to that. I'm liking Budgie. Like, that's why I have this Manjaro. So I'm, that's why I haven't reinstalled, uh, I haven't installed Gnome over here yet. It's because, um, or uh, Solace Gnome over here yet. It's because I don't want to get rid of Manjaro, but I don't want to get rid of my Debian build either. <laughs> I like them both. Is Firefox and Linux not enable the auto scroll by default? Why do I not get the live notifications lately? I, you know, because YouTube is screwed up. They are, they are like, they're just gone mad. Like I've had in the last couple days, they've they've demonetized. I think every video during the critical up shoots. Still yesterday, the Firefox Quantum on Linux Mint was demonetized this morning. It already had over a thousand views. I submitted it for review. Of course, they won't review a video until it's had a thousand views. It is almost at 2,000 views, and they are still not doing it. So that is my most popular video right now is demonetized. YouTube, you got to figure yourself out. You know, it's just like, yeah, I mean, it's... And of course, the the Facebook video was demonetized for like less than a day. Uh, they decided to remonetize that. I didn't even challenge that one. I did not even challenge the Facebook one because that was a little pushing the boundaries on that. That's as close to pushing the boundaries as I get. Um, so I never even challenged that one, and it's re back to monetized status. So, sorry, training girl. Um, yeah, I'm, the best I can tell you is if you have calendar notifications, unless things change, I stream. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time Wednesdays and 9 p.m. Eastern Time Fridays and Saturdays and the Christian Channel 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursdays. So that's kind of if you want to set schedules uh, on things that are not YouTube, that's actually where you can, you know, I, I try and stick to that schedule as much as I can. Where's Firefox? Let's see. Um, the software center doesn't work. Maybe try flat, install flat pack through the terminal. I'm curious to see how well implemented this is. Um, sure. How do I install a flat pack through the terminal? Um, is it just flat pack and package name? Hmm. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Install. Okay, I think it's just flat pack install package name. Ref must be specified. Okay, flat pack install option location remote. Okay. Names must contain at least two periods. Um, okay, well, let's see if we can figure this out. I mean, who reads documentation? What do we need documentation for? If anybody knows that off the top, throw it in the comments. If anybody knows how to install this, uh, it's not something I have researched intensively. So let me, though, come down here and see if I can gain any uh, information. Let me just look at this, see if it tells me the package name. All right, let's just go ahead and go to Flatpak's website. Let's see how we can install a Flatpak. Is it that? I think it's that, right? Okay. That's how to install it. Let's go applications. There we go. Command line. Okay. Oh, you actually have to install them using the the naming format on like an Android app. Huh, okay. That's exciting. All right.
It's actually a royal pain. <laughs> All right. No, I don't want that. Give me command line. Okay, so here we go. We'll just kind of copy this. Let's cop. Uh, maybe, maybe copy that. Copy this. Paste into the terminal. Okay, I guess it's installing. Sure, let's go ahead and install it. So yeah, it uh, looks as though it's working. Let's see. Let's see if uh, what finally happens at the end because. Like I said, that it, uh, it it did not work from installing them from the software manager at this point in time. But let's see what happens here. Looks like it's doing something. All right, let's jump back over to comments. Well, that does its thing. Let's see if there's anything else in there. Wife said, Tom does not need to get married, but it would help to have a woman's touch, especially on his bad hair days. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, you're the second person. Apparently, I haven't been having a bad hair day, but you know what? I'm a guy. I don't care. <laughs> Us men, we don't, we don't care. <laughs> That's my way. Just shave it off. There you go. All right, how's that? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's probably the fact that I took a shower, but I neglected to wash my hair today. So, uh, you know, it's probably what happened. It does feel that way. Sorry, I'll make sure I wash before tomorrow. <laughs> Tech Bismo, how's it going there? Techno Bismo, have you crossed 100 yet? You were so close today. Okay, if only there were some sort of website as YouTube were to Mastodon. Yeah, I'd agree. There's like vid.me and there's a few other ones, but I don't know. Bad hair day and beard days just got me close to my current barber. She rocks. <laughs> yeah, I did run an electric razor. I got to sharpen it though. Flat packages have weird names. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually the same the same uh, um, uh, the same. Uh, naming convention you use in an Android app because it's basically it's like the way you package Java files. Yeah, this is taking forever to download. It has it has to download 120 megabytes. It's downloading at 200 kilobit per second right now. So this is probably going to take a little bit of time. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see what else is new on Linux Mint and see if there's anything else we can be talking about here. Oh, official site. Okay, so the Matei beta release is out now as well, by the way. Um, I'm, of course, doing the cinnamon because I'm most curious on the cinnamon because... Uh, if it's good, I'm, and it looks, it looks absolutely amazing, so I'm thinking I very well might, uh, I very well might put this on the other computer. Uh, right, there is a 32-bit version available as well, so we're still running some 32s. Where's the, what's new? There it is. All right, let's see what else is new. Oh, we're 50% done, all right. Okay, so we looked at the software manager. We looked at the flat pack support. It seems like it's um not really working over there right now. Backup tool is great. Um still can't back up natively to a network drive, which is a challenge, but that's okay. Oh, time shift. That's the other one I didn't look at yet. Let's go ahead and have a look at time shift. All right, I'm guessing I just type in, no, I can't just type in time shift. Time shift should exist. I don't see it. Am I on the right right one or not? I've got to make sure I'm on the right right Linux Mint. <laughs> there it is. It is there. It does exist. I, I hit the, the button there and my, uh, my uh, internal, my uh, host computer menu popped up. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Select snapshot type. 
rsync or btrfs let's see using copies of system files using rsync this guy created using built-in features of the file systems I'm guessing rsync probably sounds like the safer option down the road um, so then click on that that's going to estimating our system size how's this guy doing then we have to choose where it's going so here's daily so here's the schedule uh, how many we keep so there's a daily how many we keep stop cron emails for the schedule task I want to go back to the previous let's see you know what it, it's not telling me is uh, it's not telling me the size of it let's go ahead and go next go ahead and just keep one daily hit next and finish okay so I guess it's it's working okay location schedule daily users so that gets us back to the wizard Okay, so it looks like it's there. The one downside is I can't see, like, I guess after it does one, one such snapshot, it'll kind of tell me how big it is. That's kind of one of those things I'd like to see. I'm not sure any application will actually show me that data, though. All right, so it appears as though our, let's see, it looks appears as though Agenda did actually get installed here. So let's see if I can find Agenda in my menu. Looks like I cannot. Well, I mean, it says it installed everything correctly, but I don't see any such program in my menu. Again, this could be my ignorance of not knowing how flat packs work, but I'm not seeing any such application in the menu. I can't seem to run any such application from the terminal. So uh, that is kind of problematic. Let's go ahead and let this thing do its thing. Let's see if there's anything else I'm missing here. Uh, okay, crash reports, a uh, new tool called system reports. Let's go ahead and have a look at system reports. System logs, here is our system reports. Let's see what system reports tells me. So any crash reports, information reports, here's paste bin, here's I can delete things. Okay, so that's useful. So if the thing crashes, you have that. There's nothing there right now, but that's quite okay. I don't think we're going to sit here for a time shift to do its entire thing, but let's go ahead and have a look at our comments real quick. All right. <clears throat> Fair does have to download all the package dependencies, so it slows download times to be expected. Hello, Mr. Tracy Williamson. How is Ohio doing? Interceptor, greetings. So you can store your time chip backups on a separate drive. That's very oh, you know what? Let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. I missed that part. Let's look at our settings again. Location. Okay, so yeah, you so you can store it on different drives. Um so I could plug in a USB drive. Like if I wanted to set this up to do the backup at night, I could just pop in a USB drive. Um, have it do its thing and then set a, a you know a script to shut the computer down at the end of that and then I have a backup on my USB drive I could do something like that so that would actually be uh, a functional way to do this 
Uh, so that's actually, uh, that would be a, a good application. So yeah, you can save it. It looks like it has to be saved to a specific hard drive or whatever type of drive in the system. Um, probably does not look like I have the option, once again, to send that to a network drive, but um, oh well. Yeah, browse pulls up. Yeah, so pretty much browse just kind of pulls up the whole whole thing there. So yep, yeah, that's good. So that's nice. All right. <clears throat> Time shift is like Clonezilla, but does not clone one hard drive to another in terms of creating system image. Then the image is the same. It looks like there's one option is an image, and another option is just like a full file backup. Um, Flat pack run command name. Okay, let's try that. Um... I'm just kind of going on on my gut right now. I have no idea if I'm doing anything right. Let's see. Okay. See, now I'm trying to hack GitHub. I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> um, that's not working for me either. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Not a fan of, of Flatpak. Okay, snaps, solace, snap, install, package name, it appears on the system. This flat pack, I don't know. Maybe I just need to read the documentation. I probably just need to read the documentation, but we'll see. All right, what else has changed on here? Guess there is a Nemo plugin option. All right, let's go ahead and jump back over here. So under Nemo, come down here, edit and plugins, and it looks like we have the option to do a variety of different plugins here. Let's see. See what kind of gems and jewels we can find in this guy. Um, I don't know. So if I come over here. I don't know. I'd, I'll have to. I'll have to look into these a little bit more. But apparently, you can do plugins and things into Nemo now. So I don't know. We'll have to look into that one. Can't say I dug deep deep into that one. And then, of course, we looked at the window progress down at the bottom. So that was that was kind of cool. All right. Let's see. At least we have app image. Yep. Is the beta now available? Yes, this is the beta. This is this is the beta. This is not the uh, uh, not the final release. You know, one more thing I'm going to check right now. This there is actually a a problem that only occasionally shows up on Linux Mint 18.2, and uh, that is every now and again if I'm transferring files from any other device and I've seen it on my network folders and I've seen it in other places as well that sometimes it will move folders not copy them 
So I want to check a couple little things here. I want to see first if I grab these folders or these files, I'm going to drag them over. Okay. Um, I want to drag something that's a little bit bigger, but so come over here. I'm going to refresh this. Okay. So it looks like looks like that did not happen that time. So that's good. I still have my pictures. The problem is the pictures would uh, the pictures were uh, would be moved instead of copied. And so that was uh, a sort of a challenge there. Let me see what else I can do here. Mm. All right, so we're going to copy over another. F we're going to do two separate files, and I want to do another quick test here. And these are videos, so they're going to be bigger. One thing I want to see is the progress bar okay so you can see now at the look if you look at the progress bar how it's um, it's slowly moving over with the the red progress bar and now one of the challenges that uh, that uh, Nemo has is if you copy two things over it doesn't start copying the second until the first is done so it'll wait so of course you can come over here and push the play and that way it'll copy them simultaneously um, so you have that option there as well. So uh, that is actually just something to uh, uh, something to keep in mind. But I just wanted to double check that functionality, see if that's still there. But I love that new status bar they have at the bottom showing us the the status. Let's go ahead and make sure these are unharmed. Okay, good. All right. So that's that. All right. Anything else we should look at before we wrap this guy up? You have a part two of your top five open source program video editors. Music creation tool, although I don't use it myself. I have a friend who does. You know, I, I've had a bunch of more requests, and I kicked out Audacity that I wanted to include. I had a few other ones out there, so I should do a part two to that because I, there's just so many, so many more that I had to kick out. I could do multiples of them, um, but LMMS, let me look into that one. We'll do another top five. So that is LMMS. I do want to bring back Audacity. I might just do like a, a audio, you know, like a music creator's edition because that's kind of something that, uh, something I should do there. Um, so many music apps I didn't include. And say is this definitely a beta release. See you later, Xiphoid Process. How is HIDP support? They did say that it was improved. There is a specific statement on that. Let me read what they have to say. Do, 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 do. That was somewhere up here. Yeah, maybe it was down down near the bottom. Artwork improvements. Oh, that's that's cool. Okay, so that'd be artwork improvements. That'd be good. HIDPI support gets better. Software manager and software sources were po uh, were ported to GTK3. Now support HIDPI. HIDPI support in Cinnamon 3.6 now defaults to auto. It was disabled in previous editions, so the environment will scale out of the box. Okay, um, and I am on. Uh, I'm running this. Uh, well, I'm running my current one on um, two HD monitors. If that makes any difference. Um, Haven't had any issues. Let's see. So they are saying it is better. We have a Photoshop. We have Photoshop and we have 3ds Max. We have a sound manipulator, but what about music? 
Yeah, and that's the thing is I don't do quite as much on music. I was originally going to include Audacity. In fact, if you watch that top five video, the first four, you'll see the fifth tab open was Audacity. I kicked it out for Caden Live because I'm like, well, all this video content creation, I don't have a video editor. So I dro dropped it for Caden Live. But yeah, um, I definitely want to go back in and do a music edition, particularly since I have a, a couple good friends that do a lot with music. And so I'd love to... I'd love to get in there and uh, and do some music ones, uh, trying to encourage them to to look into and learn the open source applications rather than relying on Logic Pro because who knows when they go the way of 3ds Max and start charging $185 a month to use it. Of course, it's, it's all a conspiracy. Where's my hat? It's all a conspiracy because frankly, all the schools. If you go to school for that kind of stuff, my brother did. All they teach you to use is Photoshop. 3ds max all of the professional paid programs that's all they teach you to use they don't teach you anything about the free and open source applications which are just as good they're like they feel clunkier that's because you're not used to it you're not used to it um i kind of took the time to specialize in gimp because i mean it's when i'm doing web design work there not a day goes by i don't open up photoshop to do work and i need to be able to do all that stuff on gimp right right katie right you don't like gimp though because it's logo as a doggy do you no no? Okay. Alright. Do you, uh, have you used Redshift? I have not used Redshift. Let me write down Redshift in case it's related to music or content creation. Alright. Let's see. Home, home bank for finance app. Yeah, well, that's a finance app, though. I'm not looking for a finance app. I'm looking for something to keep books. I'm looking for something like QuickBooks that is... I'm not looking for banking stuff. I I don't bother with little apps for that. But what I need is something to build P&L sheets and, and all of the other budgeting stuff, things like that. I'm going to be looking up a bunch of apps here before long. All right, all right. Yeah, that's what my brother's trying to do a startup indie game video game company. And frankly, you know, it's like right when he graduated, that's when 3ds Max went to $185 a month. You can't buy the application anymore, you know. And Photoshop's done the same thing with well, the whole Adobe suite. They've done the same thing. It's, it's all, you know, it's all, all paid, all subscription based paid, which makes no sense. Like the thing that's like one of those things is that when I was in college, I was very skilled and gifted at programming, but I never pursued it because the applications at that time, it would cost me several thousand dollars to get a compiler. So it wasn't worth my time to spend the time learning. Well, if I could go back in high school now with the resources we have here, um, then what I see here going on is that all of those tools, we can get C++ compilers now, free, open source, work perfectly fine on Linux, all these types of things. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's the way. Um, and, and that's why I'm encouraged by I see the, some of the younger channels with, with pseudo Linux and tech Bismo, where these are, are young kids that are learning this stuff now. Uh, step, step aside world, they're, these guys are going to be coming because they're already not focused on just all of the cultural things they're focused on learning how to learn these new applications learning how to learn the open source software if you keep doing that stuff you'll have way more opportunities than we had when we were that age because we did not have the open source access to these software applications and that is why Linux is such a, a better option than your Windows and your Mac with all your proprietary stuff and all that kind of stuff all right, GNU Cash. Yeah, I use GNU Cash for one of my two businesses, um, but I mean, I still really prefer uh, QuickBooks because of the the graphs and things. I need to spend some time learning more about GNU Cash, though. That's really uh, what I need to do. Um, let me uh, do something over here. One thing I need to do is turn off this auto arrange on the desktop. That drives me crazy. All right, now we're going to drop these in over here. Yeah, nice. Is 
Just looking at the uh, looking at how they uh, the images look in the folders now. Looks pretty good. All right. Three thousand fourteen dollars for three years, and you have to pay two thousand every year to upgrade for both. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know, I mean, it's 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 one thing for a big company like EA or Activision or whatever else to to yeah, yeah whatever. But that's the problem is you get a small indie startup game company that's trying to get off the ground. You can't afford that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, I'm still bootstrap mode and web development stuff, and I paid a thousand dollars for my Adobe Creative Suite back in 2010, and I got it so cheap because I bought it the day that CS5 came out. I bought one of the last CS4s available on Amazon for a 60% discount. And so I bought that, and I haven't upgraded anything since. Now, that's bad for Adobe. Like, Adobe's like, oh, we haven't gotten any money on these. You know what? That's fine, because Adobe is way better to pay their bills than I am, <laughs> okay? And I don't have... Uh, I mean, let's just go ahead and have a have a quick look at uh, at what it would cost to to get to get these applications. So suppose I want to be a video game designer now. Um, first, first we'll of course need Adobe products, and we're going to need more than just Photoshop. We're going to need essentially the whole Adobe software suite. So we come over here, and um, let's see. Oh, I can save twenty percent. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I don't need that. I don't need that. Where's my? Why are these sites getting so bad now? It's like, okay, there we go. View all plans and prices. So we're gonna price this up for a small startup company. All right. So, if I want to use just the apps, I can pay annually. I can do a prepaid or I can do a monthly. This is probably the cheapest. It's going to cost me $500 a year. Now, at the end of the year, that's, oh, that's an individual. Hold on. I need a small business. Um, of course, they always, they always uh, overprice the small businesses. Let's just go individual. I'll do this as a sole proprietor. A sole proprietor can play the market and do individual prices on things. So, Assuming you don't need the stock, which eh, you may, you may not, we're looking at the cheapest option is $479, okay? So that's just your Adobe packages. Um, uh, is, it, is it Autodesk? Isn't Autodesk where 3ds Max is from? I think that's right. Okay, so there's your Maya. There's let's go ahead with 3ds Max. There's 3ds Max and there's Maya. Let's let's just do this one. We're gonna throw the other one out. We're on a budget. We're on a budget. Are you gonna tell me the price? Uh, I guess I have to go to subscribe. Oh yeah, I can pay three years up front for four thousand. I can do one thousand, or I can do one eighty-five monthly. So yeah, there you go, there you go. Um, and you know, once you stop paying it, it just goes away. So this is the challenge. A small startup company, you're looking at two thousand dollars a year just for software. That, in many ways, is too much to ask for a small company. Who, I mean, realize we we released the first game that we released, and I'll go ahead and do a pitch for this. Um, the first game that we released, I'm one of his tech designers, is this game at Red Falcon Run. You can actually come over here and you can play it for free on the practice mode. Um, that we have a compete mode. You can register, compete, and uh, we have a. I think it's a biweekly drawing for um, fifty dollars. So I think our tournament just reset, so it's about two weeks before the next one's over. So um, this game took us from concept to deployment two years. So for two years, we'd have to pay all this money with having to pay out to anybody creating stuff, but without actually seeing any profit. This for me is 100% right now, loss. I have not received anything for this. And to be perfectly candid, I'm, I'm not holding my breath anytime soon. But, 
you know, there I am. There's there's the geeky website development and the sysadmin. Um, but, um, you know, this is this game concept is it's a neat concept. It's kind of cool and fun to play, but, you know, it's not a profitable endeavor. And we were able to build a lot of this off of pre-existing site licenses and things. And we're not paying a whole lot for sysadmin stuff because I'm able to do it in my spare time. Uh, things like that. And so, you know, these are those things that, that we have to consider is that all of this subscription pricing is deeply, deeply, deeply hurting um, small business. That's what it does. It deeply hurts small business. Well, I should get back off my soapbox. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what other people are saying. Programs are not cross-platform anywhere, so there are a lot better reasons to use Bundar. Yep, that's right. Photoshop is overrated. You can use Inkscape and GIMP and get 95% of features of Photoshop. And actually, the last 5% is in Krita, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> the, only thing, the only thing that Photoshop does better than GIMP really is layer properties. And there's a few other little odds and ends, like tiny. I was thinking about doing a comparative video, GIMP versus Photoshop, um, just to, to do some comparative stuff. Um, I think the only reason I'm not is because my version of Photoshop is so old. People are like, hey, this is an old version of Photoshop, though. Like, yeah. Um, but uh, that last little bit that GIMP can't do, <laughs> Krita does <laughs> very well. The only thing Krita doesn't do well that Photoshop does do pretty well is um, uh, uh, text layers. And that's on their target to fix. So they might have even fixed it by now. I really haven't followed the project for a while. Open source not only saves you money, but it also more secure. Is there no piggyback malware, etc.? Yep, that is the case. That is the case. There you go, Kitty. You guys get to see the Kitty for a bit. Ah, I don't want to advertise Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Autodesk is absolutely horrible. Adobe is exactly the same. Let's see. Yep. All right. Where'd that go? Hey, look, it's Linux. Yep. All right. Can't wait for Blender's 2.8 update with Grease Pencil Tool, which will allow a whole new user to make two. Ooh, that sounds exciting. 4,000. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, come on. But that was that was like for, you know, a couple years. I mean, come on. Isn't Blender just as good as 3ds Max? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my brother's trained on it. He says the only, he does. He says he doesn't like Blender because it feels more like a programmer. Uh, like it was done by a program. I'm like, yeah, it's the, all that is, all that means is that you just need to relearn it. What, kitty? No, no, come back here. Come back here. Uh, Crit is awesome, and what I can't do there, I can do in GIMP. Yep. It was good if you, uh, if you buy it, but they take a long time to port back changes into the open source version. Huh. Claw tester for the kitty desktop. Yep. <laughs> it's my XFCE, uh, Kitty Patrol. Right, Kitty? What? You're not allowed on my desk. You know that. You're not allowed on my desk. Back up. You have your front two paws on the desk. That is about it. <laughs> All right. He's purring up a storm. Let's see if I can hear him purring. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that or not, but he's purring up a storm. Even Arch Linux didn't have Firefox Quantum's repo till the next day. They don't always have the most bleeding edge software. Yeah, I mean, I actually on my uh, on my main Linux Mint computer here, I do have the trunk uh, Firefox trunk, which is I think 58. All right, folks. Well, I think I'm gonna jump off here right now. We'll go ahead and end this with some with some kitty feeding um, because kitty feeding is just awesome. So thanks for watching, folks. Oh, ooh, yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Kitty's excited. Kitty's excited. You got this one here. Aww. And how about one more for the desk? Here you go. <laughs> look right in. Kitty, kitty, look right into the camera, kitty. <laughs> hmm. 
All right, folks, uh, we are going to go uh, head off, so thanks for watching. Have you seen the new Firefox ad on TV? I have not. Gimp, uh, the comparison video of GIMP uh, would be good. Yeah, I mean, the, the downside is my version of, GIMP, of Photoshop is so old, people would be like, you bitch, that's old. Um, oh, well. Firefox ads keep pre-rolling before random tech videos. Yep. Yeah, I, I've seen that. Actually, you know what I've seen lately? Facebook ads. You know Facebook's dying when they have to start advertising on YouTube, okay? Um, I mean, yeah, Facebook's done. Just <laughs> nail on the coffin, Facebook's dead. Right, Kitty? Facebook's done? Yeah? Yeah? All right, folks. Have yourself a wonderful evening. We will catch you all later.